Uh, hello everyone, welcome to the Infra seminar series. Today with us we have uh, Masoud Pedram from our very own uh, USC uh, and uh, uh, he's going to tell us about parametric oscillators and icing machines. Sure. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm glad to be here to present. It's the first time for me to present at INQA. Uh, I'm going to talk about the work that we have done on realization of icing machines. Uh, using Josephson parametric oscillators. Um, this is a uh, joint work with uh, Dr. Sassan Rasfa, uh, Mehdi Kamal, and Professor uh, uh, Nobuyuki Yoshikawa, whom I'm sure you know. Um, so um, essentially, uh, uh, my group uh, has been working on superconductor electronics for uh, a number of years now. And the reason for uh, focusing on this uh, post CMOS uh, computing fabric is because of its extreme energy efficiency promise and the high performance that it has. Uh, in spite of the overhead of uh, paying for the cooling costs to cryogenic temperatures, this uh, technology can uh, deliver uh, at least um, 10x, but perhaps more like 100x energy efficiency gain uh, over uh, state of the art. Uh, CMOS design operating at two nanometer uh, technology and so on. Uh, of course, it could also have very high performance, 50 gigahertz and above easily. All right, so um, let, let's look at the, uh, the basic switching element in this technology is Josephson Junction. Uh, it, it is when uh, you have uh, two uh, superconducting material uh, separated by some kind of barrier. Uh, then depending uh, on um, the uh, operating temperature, uh, which should be uh, below uh, the temperature at which uh, superconductivity uh, properties um, uh, show up, uh, we could get a, um, a persistent current flowing uh, from uh, one superconducting material to the next superconducting material in, in form of the Cooper pairs that tunnel through the um, the, the barrier uh, in between. There are Schrodinger equations that describe this behavior and uh, that's beyond the scope of the current presentation. So we use these two terminal devices to basically build uh, a pulse-based logic family, which is inherently synchronous and has uh, um, uh, uh, unfortunately limited fan out drive, but a lot of uh, other uh, excellent features in terms of the switching speed and low energy consumption per switching uh, action. Uh, essentially, when you look at these kinds of single flux quantum logic family, uh, there, 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 there is a stage for transfer of um, the magnetic uh, flux that's coming as a volt a second uh, or ampere Henry pulse. Uh, and, and then either gets uh, transferred uh, through uh, Josephson junctions and inductors or it gets stored in a squid loop like loop uh, uh, that, that's shown uh, on the right hand side of the figure at the bottom. Um, essentially, um, this, this logic family, the way it works is that when a, um, a volt second pulse in magnetic flux uh, 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 or flux on arrives on the left hand side, um, then um, it will cause the uh, first Josephson junction uh, on the left side uh, to leap uh, and go out of superconductivity. And as a result, uh, generate a, a similar magnetic quantum uh, flux and uh, send it to the right. And the process continues until you come to a storage loop in which the, the, the um, uh, flux on gets stored uh, until there is a readout uh, pulse coming in usually into form of a, a clock pulse. So anyway, uh, this is um, uh, inherently synchronous design results in gate level pipelining. And as part of the project that we did in the US, we have shown that this, this kind of circuit could easily uh, operate at uh, 30, 40, 50 gigahertz, uh, delivering very high energy efficiency. And we can use it to design all kinds of circuits, uh, of course. Uh, from uh, data paths uh, to uh, different types of data paths to random logic uh, and so on. Uh, of course, the big issue is to have a dense uh, uh, superconducting uh, memory on chip that a lot of people are working on and 
since the solution requires uh, some kind of uh, magnetic uh, layer to be introduced into the standard um, JJ. So anyway, um, uh, single flux quantum logic gates uh, could be designed to act as transmission lines, as the splitters, as AND gates, as OR gates, as shown here. For example, this is uh, an AND gate when uh, both inputs uh, within a window of time, which is defined by the clock cycle time, uh, arrive. Uh, then the, the, the output uh, fires on arrival of a clock signal. Otherwise, there's going to be no activity at the output. And we have verified, of course, by simulation and measurements that all of these things work. And this is well known. This is not our invention. We are just applying it. Uh, so we, we we try to use the superconductor electronics uh, to um, fabrics to also implement uh, an Ising machine solver. As you know, Ising machine is uh, quite uh, interesting, uh, exciting um, uh, construct that allows us to um, model uh, the spins uh, of, say, electrons uh, in, in some assembly of spins, say, on a lattice. And uh, we can show that uh, combinatorial optimization problems can be mapped to quadratic binary optimization problems and then subsequently mapped to um, these Ising machines uh, that, that, that uh, minimization of the Hamiltonian of which solves the combinatorial optimization problem. Um, and some of these uh, optimization problems are NP-hard problems. Of course, we cannot guarantee to find the global optimum solution in polynomial time. But from a practical point of view, these uh, solutions are quite uh, efficient and, and find good solutions to large scale, difficult combinatorial problems uh, in very acceptable, uh, reasonable amount of time. Uh, so the overall flow is what I said, from combinatorial optimization problem to QBO to Ising problem formulations. Uh, then we go ahead and convert it to a uh, architecture known as uh, LHC. I'm going to explain it. And then uh, take the LHC architecture and map it to a superconductor uh, oscillator-based hardware based on Josephson parametric oscillators. And then uh, basically apply um, uh, any link to that uh, hardware to uh, come up with the uh, solution. Uh, so uh, th this shows the principle uh, at work uh, for solving uh, icing machine problems uh, based on uh, really coupling with the parametric oscillators, also known as metronomes. Um, uh, th this is, of course, at the discrete component level, multiple physical oscillators sort of placed on a metallic surface so that they could couple to each other. And then you can, uh, after injection docking, come up with a stable uh, phase solution uh, for solving a problem, say, uh, weight, weighted max cap. Uh, so the number of uh, Ising machine realizations already exist, uh, uh, such as uh, CMOS-based one that make use of um, either registers or static gram cells or uh, LC tanks, uh, oscillators, um, to uh, sort of model the spin. And then uh, you could go ahead and uh, set up a, a system uh, using these uh, basic components um, and, and, and solve the system uh, in, in real time to come up with solutions. There are memory store based solutions. There are also a superconductor electronic based solution using qubits, uh, quantum bits. Um, uh, we, we operate with classical bits here. There's no qubits uh, in, in, in effect being used. And then, uh, of course, there is a large class of, um, uh, uh, sort of uh, papers, um, and publications, results um, uh, using silicon optics uh, to do this, notably from Caltech. Um, all right. So, um, uh, Ising machine uh, and uh, Ising models. Ising model captures the behavior of spins on a lattice. Ising machines are a physical device says that designed to solve the combinatorial optimization problems using the, the Ising models. Hamiltonian is a function that describes the total energy of a system. Combinatorial optimization problems could be any anything as long as it's combinatorial and optimization, uh, including traveling salesman problem or max cut problem, uh, 
or, or a tree sap uh, problem or what have you. And, and these problems could be mapped to the Ising Hamiltonian minimization uh, problem generally. Uh, the Hamiltonian is shown here. Uh, there are spins uh, modeled as uh, sigma i or j's. You have uh, spin interactions with the coupling inter strengths specified by j i j coefficients. And then you have the external field uh, on uh, individual spins. Uh, so you get these two terms. Um, uh, one is the local field or external field uh, uh, effect, and one is the interaction effect between the spins. That could be uh, one or minus one in the uh, Ising formulation, as opposed to zero and one in Cubo, quadratic binary optimization problems. And the goal is, of course, is to uh, find the state of the system, uh, i.e. the uh, spins or, uh, in, in the system up or down, such that you, you minimize the Hamiltonian and you can see the negation added here um, uh, to, to make sure that you're doing the minimization problem. Uh, of course, finding global optimum is, is generally very difficult and we may end up with local minimum, uh, but uh, uh, typically, if you do a good job of uh, annealing the system, you should get uh, something close to global optimum. Uh, so um, the, there are many uh, architectures proposed uh, to uh, physical architectures uh, proposed to uh, allow a design of a scalable quantum annealer. Uh, there is the well-known D-Wave Chimera architecture which is uh, a, a group of um, uh, sort of uh, spins which, with strong uh, local uh, interactions uh, among them, uh, but then uh, relatively loosely connected when you go from one group of uh, bits to two bits to the next group. Uh, and then we have the LHC, which is the one that we are using for the, this realization uh, that uh, converts really um, all pairwise uh, interactions between spins into four body interactions in the LHC architecture. Uh, so um, the um, uh, mathematical uh, presentation is that you start from a quadratic unconstrained binary optimization problem in the form of the uh, optimization equation shown uh, in, on the second line from the top with variables being zero and one, then you do a change of variable uh, from X to sigma, the spins uh, using this well-known transformation to get to the Ising Hamiltonian. And then you convert the Ising Hamiltonian to the so-called LHZ uh, Hamiltonian, uh, which maps the interactions uh, uh, of the original uh, Hamiltonian formulation to the strength of the external fields uh, components in the LHC Hamiltonian. Uh, so the Hamiltonian that we originally had uh, for solving the problem gets converted to this LHC Hamiltonian in which you can see there are two terms. The first term is just uh, the local uh, or external field interactions uh, and effects. And the other one is a set of constraints that are added, these are four body constraints that are added to guarantee that any four physical qubits which are placed in one of the LHC tiles uh, will uh, only assume spin states such that the number of ones in that configuration is even, either zero of them or two of them or four of them are, are, are ones in, in the same direction. And no other possibility is acceptable. Uh, so, um, this is a unit cell tile design uh, of the LHC. LHC architecture is not ours. It was proposed and presented by LHC, Lechner, Hauke, Zoller in 2015 or so timeframe. Uh, but it's a very elegant, very scalable solution. We like it very much. And, and we think this is the right approach to uh, use if, if you're trying to come up with a scalable architecture uh, to, to, to do Ising machines. Uh, so uh, I, the, the, the way this uh, tile works, there are four spins. Uh, uh, these are the, uh, the, the so-called the spins in the LHC formulation. They capture the interactions, really. And then uh, there is the two auxiliary spins, SA1 and SA2, 
uh, that are added, uh, the strengths of the um, uh, local field or external field of the uh, ancillary bits, spins, SA1, SA2, is twice that of the normal spins when you set it up. Uh, and then um, if you go ahead and calculate the um, state, uh, the total energy of the system in any of the states, uh, physical JPO states, with the ancillary JPO states also shown, you can see that the minimization of the energy happens when there is an even number of ones in the physical JPO state for four of them or two of them or zero of them, as expected. All right, so uh, we, we can therefore take now a optimization problem such as the uh, uh, max cut problem that, that's uh, really formulated as uh, a, a original Hamiltonian with the spins one, two, three, four, and interactions J12, J13, and so on, and map it into the LHC architecture in which now as a result of uh, this uh, uh, transformation, uh, you get a set of plaquettes, inter overlapping plaquettes or tiles, and, and uh, the, each of these plaquettes or, 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 or tiles is really capturing uh, the interactions that existed uh, between the um, uh, spins that you had in the original problem. And, and so uh, you, you do this mapping, uh, uh, and, and then you get a new problem formulation on the LHC architecture, and then you go ahead and solve it. But uh, how do we, so that, that's the general idea uh, at the very high level, uh, but uh, let's see how we can actually uh, design, use superconductor electronics to, to implement this um, LHC architecture uh, as a scalable architecture solution for solving uh, Ising uh, problems. So the key idea is parametric oscillator. So a parametric oscillator allows you to um, basically inject um, uh, energy into a, an oscillator. And uh, the rate, if you uh, uh, inject energy at the rate of 2F, the, the, the oscillator will oscillate at the rate of F. Uh, and, and so you, you, you have the ability, therefore, to uh, control the oscillation frequency of the oscillator. Uh, you can uh, also change the, the phase for the eye pump uh, itself, and then that will also uh, cause either constructive or destructive interference between adjacent uh, uh, parametric oscillators uh, that would uh, change the strength of coupling between these oscillators. Uh, so um, uh, the, this is, um, uh, so to do this, uh, we, 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 uh, there is an analogy, well-known analogy between the way a uh, Josephson junction uh, operates and its IV characteristics uh, and uh, the, a, a pendulum in, in our basic uh, sophomore physics class. Uh, but then um, we could use a, a model of the JJ itself directly, which is governing Josephson equations or we could uh, go ahead and look at the uh, 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 squid, which is uh, uh, two JJs with uh, parallel connected with inductors in between, and use the squid um, to uh, to create the same effect that we want in terms of uh, being able to control the um, amount of um, uh, magnetic flux uh, in the uh, in, in the in the squid uh, and therefore the uh, flow uh, the, the, the change the inductance the effective inductance of that uh, uh, squid structure. Generally, JJ you can think of it as a nonlinear inductance inductance that you could set uh, uh, as you desire, and then in the same way you could take a squid and and, and change its effective inductance by uh, coupling different amount of magnetic flux into it. Uh, so this is a little bit more details about how you could actually change the inductance of a Josephson junction uh, on the left, or you can do uh, it on the right for the squid. We like the second approach on the right uh, because it allows you without establishing a physical electrical connections to provide 
more current into some uh, element uh, using uh, magnetic flux coupling to get the uh, same effect that you desire without any physical connection. So a, a Josephson parametric uh, amplifier or oscillator is shown here. Uh, it, it comprises of the uh, JJ's, uh, shunted uh, JJ's, IC1, IC2, a uh, uh, capacitor CS to create the LC effect, the LC tank resonation, uh, resonance effect. And then you have uh, also a resonator uh, to get things started. You have uh, uh, IDC uh, for uh, providing uh, the DC biasing current to tune the JPO frequency. Uh, and you have the eye pump that allows you to inject energy into the system at the rate you want so that you could set the, uh, again, the resonance frequency. Uh, so uh, this, this kind of JPO is well known um, and could be used actually to model a spin. So any one spin in the system would be really implemented as one of these uh, JPOs. And, and I can change the... Uh, fre fre resonance frequency of the uh, JPO uh, and we can also change the magnitude of the coupling between adjacent JPOs uh, by changing the phase uh, of the uh, pump uh, current injection into the system. Uh, so we to, to do uh, the, the proper modeling of the physical processes, we need to inject also noise into the system during the annealing process. And this is white noise that we introduce, and it has effects uh, on the actual uh, magnitude of the current that flows uh, in, in, the, in the JPO. So on the right-hand side, you can see the current versus voltage relationship. But that's the typical IV characteristics that you get for uh, superconducting uh, JJs or squids. But here, what we are showing you, in fact, is that uh, when you change the temperature, at higher temperatures, there is more noise going into the system, uh, how the current is changing as a function of that noise. And that's an effect that's important for the annealing process that that's, 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 uh, we are modeling here. Okay, so uh, in terms of the Ising machine implementation, uh, we have the LHC Hamiltonian, the, the, uh, the, the authors, original authors, uh, uh, Lechner et al uh, showed how to actually um, build this general architecture, scalable architecture that captures all the terms in the LHC Hamiltonian, which is equivalent to the original uh, Ising Hamiltonian. And, and then uh, we all we have to be able to do is to uh, be able to adjust the local fields of the uh, different uh, um, spins in this design uh, and uh, also adjust the penalty terms using the ANSI bits that we have introduced into this into the system. And all of this can be done very efficiently. Uh, so uh, you see on the left-hand side, uh, the LHC tile schematic and layout. Uh, schematic is on the right-hand side. Uh, the, the layout is on the left. Uh, it uh, uses uh, four logical spins, two ancillary spins. So total of six GP JPOs are being used. Uh, this is only requiring 12 JJs in total. We implemented this in MIT Lincoln Lab SFQ5 EE process, which is 150 nanometer minimum feature size process uh, out of the MIT Lincoln Lab. And this took about uh, 450 by 450 micrometer squared area uh, to do one of these things. So uh, with about five millimeters squared total area we have, on a typical chip uh, from MIT Lincoln Lab, we, we expect to be able to fabricate maybe 12, 14, 15 uh, JPOs uh, with the supporting circuitry. Uh, so we can solve up to say 15 spin problems uh, in this case on a single chip. Of course, if you go to one centimeter square chips that they also offer, you can increase it to about 60 uh, spins. Uh, so this is, uh, we, we, we did this uh, uh, sort of validation of our system, both using the Q-tip library, solving the, uh, the, the appropriate uh, quantum uh, uh, for equation formulations and, and, and 
uh, getting the analytical results and then using Qtip library and then comparing this with the actual uh, uh, simulation results we did uh, uh, using um, the um, circuit simulators that, that we typically use uh, for um, uh, solving uh, uh, um, JJ-based uh, circuits um, and get, getting their analog behavior. Uh, so you, uh, using the library, solving the Ising Hamiltonian, calculating the probability of the ground energies and so on, uh, we, we see that uh, two solutions corresponding to uh, the two of the spins being one, two of the, this is a four spin max cut problem. So the op optimum solution in the fully connected graph uh, on four uh, vertices and six edges. So uh, therefore you, you expect the optimum solution to be two spins up, two spins down, right? And you can see that the two solutions corresponding to that 0101 0, 1, 0, 1, and 1010 uh, have the highest probability of success. Uh, and so uh, that means uh, these are the solutions to the problem that we have. Uh, so uh, we did the, so that was based on the uh, solving of the equations analytically. We did the simulation, as I said, using JoSim. And again, JoSim simulations and actual JJs and JPOs and squids and all that resulted in the exact same solution with the same probabilities shown here. Uh, similar probabilities shown here on the right hand side. Uh, so um, uh, the, in terms of the analog simulation methodology, uh, we use JOSIM uh, simulator from the Stellenbosch University, which is an excellent, very fast, um, uh, uh, and very powerful simulator uh, that's been recently developed as part of the Cold Flux project uh, uh, at USC. Uh, I, I was part of the same team. Um, uh, but the, the result was done by Stellenbosch uh, University. And, and then you can see that um, um, so these, these simulations validated uh, the, the, the uh, analytical calculations that we have done. Uh, so the, now um, we, we are looking at uh, uh, the unweighted max cut problem uh, solutions are shown, uh, possible states again. Uh, software simulation. This is repeating a little bit what, what we have shown there, there before, but here emphasizing on the fact that we, uh, from the LHC formulation, we get the interactions and then these interactions uh, that are shown uh, on the right, three interactions. If you have a four spin problem, you have three interactions, J1, 2, J2, 3, J3, 4, and uh, we find the solutions to those interactions J12, J23, J34. If I get J12 equal to one means the spin of one and two are the same, right? If I get the uh, J12 equal to zero means uh, the spin is different. So from these interactions and because we have constraints, we know we're gonna get a feasible solution. We can get uh, the corresponding correct solutions as shown uh, at the bottom uh, when you go from the three interaction spins to the four actual output spins for the solution. So um, uh, now, uh, how do we apply weights to the LHC formulation? Weights are applied by changing the phase of the pump signal itself. Uh, if you have uh, same phase, then there is constructive interference. You get a higher weight uh, between JPOs that have this uh, similar phase. If you have different phase, for example, a pi phase, that's completely destructive interference that gives minimum weight uh, between, of interaction between two adjacent spins uh, in the LHC architecture. Uh, so this is, um, again, uh, max cut problem with this time weighted. So this is the weighted version of the max cut problem with the weights shown at the bottom. And again, both are analytical simulations as well as uh, JOSIM based simulations show that we get the right results for these uh, simple toy problems. Uh, so the LHC-based uh, framework uh, is shown here in terms of uh, how we start uh, the problem formulation, generate the net list, uh, generate a set of weights, uh, do the simulations, 
uh, run JOSIM, do a state calculation, and so on and so forth. Um, so the flow is there. Uh, this is a six node unweighted max cut problem. Uh, you can see uh, the, the solutions corresponding to three spins up, three spins down, have the maximum probability of success. Uh, this is a 10 node unweighted max cut. Again, we get the maximum probability for five of the spins being high and five of the spins being low. Note that when we say five high, five ground, uh, the, the ordering doesn't matter. So five zeros, five ones is or, uh, um, the, the pattern shown here is all acceptable. Um, so uh, we, we are thinking currently about how we can extend this to a larger problem size. Of course, if you have a size N, uh, unfortunately, the complexity uh, of the LHC architecture is quadratic at this point. So the only way you can get subquadratic optimization is through the decomposition. So you can take a big problem through software, break it into smaller subproblems. You can solve each of these subproblems in order N squared complexity, but then when you combine them to get the original problem formulation, Hopefully, it's not going to be older than a square. It's going to be less than n squared. Uh, this is a very common approach that uh, people use, including in D-Wave and so on. So this problem decomposition is one way to go. Maybe there are other ways to do it. We are, we are currently thinking about what else can we, we can do uh, to try to achieve subquadratic um, uh, complexity for solving uh, Ising problems map to LHC, if we can. All right, so uh, what are the next steps? Uh, increase the number of nodes. Uh, our, our goal is to get to about uh, 100 node uh, spin problems to solve it. So far, the biggest we have done is what I showed you, 10, 10 spins. Uh, weight mapping to hardware and calibration of the circuit is more be challenging. Uh, designing the interface circuits, of course, has to be down, including the readout circuitry. We have done it, but uh, we have to scale it up. And, and then uh, optimizing the annealing process itself. Are we going to optimize that? We are looking at a number of different theoretical results and empirical uh, reports on the annealing process appropriate for this kind of optimization problems. Um, perhaps uh, I'm a bit uh, faster than I, I expected and you would like me to be, but I'm done with my presentation. I'll be glad to take any questions. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you for the nice talk. Uh, now's the time for questions. Uh, yes, uh, Ryoji. Hi. Hi. Oh, thank well, you for your great talk and Hevel. And uh, I don't think understand the the mapping to the system to the uh using hamiltonian uh for example that the system generates a forward interaction of physical spins or ancillary spins effectively helps to generate a forward interaction uh, i'm sorry i i didn't understand the, the question so the, the question is about um how uh the four body interactions in the LHC relate to the pairwise interactions in the original Hamiltonian. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Physically, how that's done. Oh, so, yeah, that's it. So, yeah, I, I think yeah. if that's the question, the, the, this is detailed ex explained in the LHC architecture itself that uh, because we, we transform really the uh, so, so, the, so the spins in the LHC formulation is really capturing the interaction, the way it's been formulated. Mm -hmm. So the notes of the LHC really are, in some ways, the edges of the original uh, graph for the... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is a duality relationship between these two graphs. Oh, yeah. that's I, I, think, I think I, just, I understand that point, but I, mm, what I have a question is, uh, this system, the circuit has uh, I, I, the circuit seems to have only two body interaction between chain fields, but uh, the LHC Hamiltonian has a four body interaction of spins. Yeah, uh, but you have the answer, right? I mean, so the four body interactions 
are established through the connections between the logical spins and the ancilla. So I can create uh, logical interactions between two, uh, I can create interactions between two logical spins through their interactions to the ancilla. And that's why you introduce the mm -hmm. ancilla. Uh, then the forward in, effective forward interaction is generated, right? I'm sorry, what is generated? Ah, uh, sorry, the effective one. I mean, the, the answer yeah, is... Effectively, yeah, effectively have, you do have, it, right? Ah, uh, uh, sorry. Then the, I have another question. So the uh, would you have some expression of the such an effective forward interaction as a function of circuit parameters, like inductance or flux or capacitance. I'm, I'm sure we do. Um, I just don't have it in, here. Um, um, so maybe I can correspond with you and send you more information. Uh, uh, th there is a lot of derivation uh, so that here that I'm not presenting, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I'll be glad to send it to you separately. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I got it. If you, uh, if you, uh, my, my email is pedram, uh, my last name, at usc.edu. It's not in my slides, but uh, my last name at usc.edu. If you uh -huh. send me a note, I'll be glad to send you any, any information that I have. I also have uh -huh. my uh, postdoctoral associate and uh, sort of co-author of the paper, Sasan Rasfa, online. Uh, Sasan, uh, can you provide more insight? Do you, can you say something more? Uh yeah, uh, I think, uh, hello, I think the yeah. question was how we forward this map this on the circuits, in the circuit level, right? Yes, we have yes. A cup, so we have a coupler circuit, which coupler is basically inductances uh, that couples all of them together. So these inductances are connected together and you couple JPOs to these inductances. Then coupler also has constant value which offsets um, I mean offsets provides the pump with the fixed phase and we have mm -hmm. in them two ancillas which these two ancillas have twice the coupling physical coupling of the normal JPOs or logical JPOs let's say then two mm -hmm. ancillas this coupling yeah, if these two ancillas are for example one then all of the other JPOs can be zero and you provide the a stable situation. So these mm -hmm. two ancillas and provide then the LHC condition, which is even number of ones. So either if these ancillas are zero one, then you have two ones, two zeros in logic. If they are zero, you have four ones. If they are two, both of them are one, you have all zeros. So that's, and the circuit parameters is basically a quarter wave uh, resonator connected to a squid loop and which resonates at around 7.5 gigahertz. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a full paper on this. I think oh. we have also put it on the uh, ah, archive. Yeah. We'll be glad to send you the paper because that has a lot more details than either of us is telling you now. And if maybe you can take a look at it, and if it's not clear, uh, we will be glad to provide additional details. Again, we have really built this and it's working in our, not built meaning on, on hardware because we, we, we have sent some parts of it to be manufactured, but we are waiting for a long time now to get it back. So, <laughs> but but we have the full JOSIM simulation models. Uh, it's a paper, it's, uh, it's a paper you say are uh, uh, posted on the archive. Uh, uh, if so, I have looked at that. that. Yeah, I think we do. Uh, first on, do we have the latest version on archive now, or uh, the latest? Or... Uh, uh, I didn't put after review because of the licensing other things, but it will be published very soon in physical review. Bill. So it's uh -huh. accepted and it's. But you can send them a preprint, right? So uh, please, uh, yeah, if you yeah, send us an email with uh, your coordinates, we'd be more than glad to send you the preprint of the physical review B paper. Has been accepted for publication. Okay, thank you. I, yeah, I will send you the email thank to you. Mm -hmm. Anyway, thank you very much.
Very well. So let me ask a quick question as well. Uh, I think you, you went through a lot of details for these devices, but as if you were to summarize this, uh, what is the mechanism for finding the uh, the optimum in, in this uh, systems? So is it classical thermal relaxation or is it quantum or is it just some sort of classical dynamics? So, so basically, uh, so currently we are simulating it, right? Uh, so we, because we, we, we don't have the actual hardware in, in our hand, although we have sent it to be fabricated. Uh, but uh, in, in our simulation results, we introduce noise uh to 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 process to model the um, sort of the real uh physical uh, system uh, annealing process and uh, then by uh really when we set up the system and then different noise sources are being introduced and we let it anneal uh and then we look at the results so it's a thermodynamical thing thanks uh, very well. If if there is no further questions, uh, then uh, thanks everybody for joining us this week, and uh, see you next week. Um, thank you. Thanks for, thanks the, for the invitation. Thank you to everybody to attend.